Hello and welcome to the August 2025 edition of The Soul Briefing. I'm Marek von Rennenkampf. This month, we'll be covering new details on the brazen incursions by unknown objects over Wright-Patterson Air Force Base late last year, eyebrow-raising UAP-focused comments from Vice President J.D. Vance and Senator Mike Rounds, and the introduction of the historic UAP Disclosure Act by Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer. But we begin this month's briefing with the groundbreaking work of astronomer Dr. Beatrice Villarreal and her colleagues. In a fascinating new paper titled Aligned Multiple Transient Events in the First Palomar Sky Survey, Dr. Villarreal and her co-authors analyzed thousands of transients, star-like phenomena that appear in pre-Sputnik astronomical surveys of the sky when no man-made objects orbited the Earth. Now, the key to the astronomers' work is that they find with exceptionally high confidence, far higher than the five sigma standard generally considered to be the threshold for claiming a statistically significant discovery in astronomy or physics, that these transient phenomena are not, are not found in the Earth's shadow, which is also known as the umbra. This intriguing result, if it is confirmed in the peer review process, is important for two main reasons. First, it largely rules out optical artifacts or defects as explanations for the transients. Imaging defects, for example, would have no reason to avoid the Earth's shadow. Second, the dearth of transients in the Earth's shadow suggests the presence of previously unknown sunlight reflecting objects that, due to the optical characteristics of the equipment involved, were several hundred kilometers above the Earth. Not only that, Dr. Villarreal and her colleagues found several candidate transients that appear aligned. If the transient phenomena are indeed reflections of the sun off of bright, shiny objects in the pre-Sputnik era, such alignments suggest any number of possibilities to include multiple objects reflecting the sun as they fly in formation, different parts of the same object reflecting the sun, erratic flight dynamics, or a combination of these possibilities. Intriguingly, one of the most statistically significant alignments of transients was captured on July 27, 1952, which coincides with the second weekend of the well-known and very well-documented July 1952 UAP incidents over Washington, D.C., when multiple radar facilities, pilots, and ground observers all saw objects behaving in perplexing ways over the course of two successive weekends. Now, this work by Dr. Villarreal and her colleagues is particularly interesting because the earliest U.S. government analyses of UAP, dating back to the late 1940s and early 1950s, all describe, quote, metallic or, quote, light reflecting objects. Not only that, the UAP era formally began in late June 1947 when a pilot named Kenneth Arnold observed a, quote, bright flash reflecting off of one of nine disc-like objects that flew erratically in the vicinity of Mount Rainier in Washington State. Arnold's hand-drawn image of one of the objects specifically states, quote, very bright when sun reflected, end quote. Now, the September 1947 Twining Memo, one of the most important documents in UAP history, which ordered the U.S. Air Force's formal investigation of the phenomenon, described the objects observed by many credible witnesses up to that point, first and foremost, as having a, quote, metallic or light reflecting surface, end quote. Similarly, a late 1948 Air Force analysis of UAP largely rules out mass hysteria, individuals seeking media attention or media influence as explanations for UAP because in one notable example, two trained observers working with the then U.S. Weather Bureau saw, quote, 
metallic discs, end quote, with a, quote, flat bottom, end quote, on multiple occasions months before, before Kenneth Arnold's widely reported June 1947 sighting. Now, while time constraints do not permit a full accounting of the many, many incidents where credible witnesses reported, quote, flashes, or in another notable instance, the, quote, bright, shiny appearance of sunlight reflecting from aluminum, end quote, suffice it to say that the UAP reported beginning in the late 1940s offer a plausible hypothesis for the brief transient glints identified by Dr. Villarroel and her colleagues in those contemporaneous astronomical surveys. It should also be noted that many witnesses described such metallic, light-reflecting objects exhibiting bizarre, erratic flight characteristics such as, quote, wobbling, oscillating, and flipping. Such observations are also not merely relics of the past. The Navy air crew that observed the well-known gimbal UAP in 2015, which appears to have a disc-like shape in infrared video, reported that the object appeared to engage in a, quote, wobbly motion after the end of the publicly available video segment. Such erratic flight characteristics and movements from objects with highly reflective metallic surfaces could conceivably account for the frequent aligned flashes observed by Dr. Villarroel and her colleagues. Now, finally, it should be noted that Dr. Villarroel has submitted another intriguing paper which finds statistical significance among transient observations, nuclear tests, and large-scale historical UAP sightings. That paper, along with a third paper, recently published in the Royal Astronomical Society's journal and which previews the astronomer's innovative earth shadow analysis method is linked in the description below. Now, it would be quite the understatement to say that this area of research deserves close attention. And on that note, I am pleased to announce that Dr. Villarroel will be the guest on this month's Soul Forum, the Soul Foundation's long-form discussion series alongside Drs. Peter Scafish and Gary Nolan. Soul Foundation members enjoy early access to the discussion and may take part in the live Zoom breakout session immediately afterward, this Friday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. To join the Soul Foundation and this exciting conversation, please look for the link in the description below or visit thesoulfoundation.org and click membership. Newly released FAA documents courtesy of John Greenwald and theblackvault.com provide intriguing details about the incursions of unknown objects over Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio last December. Now, just as a reminder, these flyovers were so brazen that they caused the facility to shut down its airspace, which drew national media coverage. The newly released FAA documents note that the base's control tower tracked up to 17, 17 of these unidentified objects on radar in the vicinity of Wright-Patterson, and that base security forces reported the objects, quote, turning lights off and flying past them in close proximity. Now, as loyal Soul Briefing viewers may remember, the incidents over Wright-Patterson were just one in a series of brazen incursions over sensitive military facilities and assets in recent years. Perhaps the most notable incidents occurred in late 2023, when a dozen or more objects flew with complete impunity over Langley Air Force Base in Virginia for nearly three weeks. Now, Langley, it should be noted, is a critical air defense facility that houses the F-22, one of the Air Force's most advanced fighter aircraft. In another incident, uncovered through superb Freedom of Information Act work by researcher Dustin Slaughter of the UAP Register, 
government contractors and drone specialists at the Avon Park bombing range in Florida observed a, quote, metallic, end quote, cylindrical object, and that, in yet another nod to Dr. Villarreal's groundbreaking research, quote, the sun was reflecting brightly on its left side, end quote. In fact, the primary witness first noticed the object because of, quote, a bright reflection in the sky that caught my attention, end quote. Now, according to the main witness, one of three to observe the UAP, the object, quote, then disappeared in front of our eyes, end quote. Now, from an analytic perspective, the fact that incursions of unknown objects have occurred at Wright-Patterson and Langley Air Force bases, along with the incident at the Air Force's Avon range, is intriguing. Beginning in the late 1970s, noted UAP researcher Leonard Stringfield began documenting allegations from ostensibly credible military and government officials describing retrieved UAP and associated research efforts. One of Stringfield's many sources, a former intelligence official whom he met through his son-in-law, alleged that retrieved craft and, quote, secret UFO research operations, end quote, occurred at Wright-Patterson and Langley Air Force bases, as well as the Avon Range. Now, of the hundreds and hundreds of military bases and sites in the United States alone, the correlation between long-standing allegations of secret UAP research activities at specific facilities and some of the most brazen incursions by unknown objects in recent years over those same locations is certainly intriguing, to say the least. Now, it should be noted that Stringfield received high praise from Captain Edward Ruppelt, the first director of Project Blue Book, two decades earlier in Ruppelt's 1956 book, The Report on Unidentified Flying Objects. Now, that book, which details countless perplexing UAP incidents, is a must-read for any student or analyst of the UAP topic. In an August 1st podcast discussion, Vice President J.D. Vance stated that he is, quote, obsessed with the UAP topic and with recently released UAP videos in particular. Vance is just the latest Trump administration official to make intriguing comments on the topic, following statements from Secretary of State and Acting National Security Advisor Marco Rubio, who spoke out several years ago in his capacity as the vice chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee. But we've also heard from Central Intelligence Agency Director John Radcliffe, former National Security Advisor and the current nominee to be the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Mike Waltz, and from Trump himself, who has described conversations with Air Force pilots who observed round spherical objects that outperform their fighter jets. At the same time, Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna of Florida told congressional reporter Matt Laszlo earlier this year that Director of National Intelligence Tulsi Gabbard has been, quote, extremely helpful, end quote, in Congress's ongoing investigation of the UAP topic. Now, speaking of congressional investigations, Senator Mike Rounds of South Dakota, a key player in the Senate on the UAP topic, stated in a July 29th interview that credible government and contractor whistleblowers have described objects that exhibit extraordinary technologies and apparently are capable of extreme performance. This, according to Senator Rounds, includes transmedium travel, which is the ability to seamlessly transition between air and space or air and water. Senator Rounds also described objects capable of achieving extreme speeds and climbing to high altitudes in very short amounts of time. Describing the whistleblowers that have spoken to the Senate behind closed doors, 
Brown said, quote, there is no reason for them to come in and try to tell us stories. These are folks that are very, very capable. They are brilliant individuals. They fear sometimes that if their whole story got out, they'd lose their jobs, end quote. Now, Brown's statements echo comments from former Senate Intelligence Committee Vice Chairman Marco Rubio, who stated that UAP whistleblowers fear reprisals, both professional and to their lives. Now, Rounds, who, like Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York, another key congressional figure on the UAP topic, sits on both the Senate Intelligence and Armed Services Committees, which, in theory at least, should be informed of all advanced technologies under development by the United States. But as Round states in this most recent interview, even after vetting, some of the objects and technologies reported by whistleblowers remain truly perplexing. Rounds, importantly, is a key co-sponsor of the UAP Disclosure Act, which, as Soul Briefing viewers will remember, is one of the most extraordinary pieces of legislation ever introduced in Congress. And on that note, on July 29th, Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer formally reintroduced the UAP Disclosure Act as an amendment to the 2026 National Defense Authorization Act, which is considered must-pass legislation each year. Senator Rounds, Senator Gillibrand, and Senator Todd Young of Indiana, a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, all joined Schumer once again in co-sponsoring the legislation. Now, as a brief refresher, the Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena Disclosure Act suggests that a secret government, quote, legacy program has retrieved and is attempting to reverse engineer UFOs and, quote, technologies of unknown origin. The eyebrow-raising term non-human intelligence is formally defined and mentioned over two dozen times in the Disclosure Act, which would also establish a review panel of nine distinguished experts in various fields to review classified government UAP records for ultimate public disclosure. This is now the third time that Schumer and Rounds have introduced the Disclosure Act. While the House previously stripped the most critical provisions from the legislation, Congressman Eric Burleson of Missouri has vowed to introduce companion legislation in the House. Burleson has also expressed some optimism that the legislation will pass this year, given that Mike Turner of Ohio, the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, whose congressional district, oddly enough, includes Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and who was widely believed to have blocked the Disclosure Act previously, is no longer in a position of significant authority. At the same time, according to Congressman Burleson, the current chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Rick Crawford of Arkansas, quote, seems open to help, end quote. Schumer, in a fantastic July 30th scoop by ace congressional reporter Matt Laszlo, also suggested that Turner was a key obstacle to the passage of the Disclosure Act in previous years and that his removal may indeed improve the legislation's chances of passage. Asked by congressional reporter Matt Laszlo about the intent and importance of the UAP Disclosure Act, Schumer, in a rare unscripted comment, responded, quote, gotta let people know the truth, whatever it is, end quote. 